Dude, my place is still a mess. So exactly three months before I started to make the big move and sell everything to live in Vietnam and try to see if I could survive there, something started happening to me. I was in a really dark place and I started losing my hair. Not in terms of a normal balding. I had huge bald chunks in the back of my head and I started to look like a zebra. And I went to the doctor and I'm like, what is going on? He told me I have something called alopecia areata. And it started off as just a little, little bald patch and it went bigger and bigger and bigger. It got so point where I was so stressed in my life where I was like even my own body is starting to betray who is starting to betray me you know what I'm saying and I'm like just like my life couldn't get any more stressful any more worse my own body starts to betraying me and I'm like what is going on so right now what we're doing is we're walking across normal traffic which is chill Cars, you're gonna have to wait a bit. So whenever I get the question about why did I leave Vancouver, a great city, making a lot of money, and people are always like, just wait, you'll get to Vietnam and you will start to see the real truth. But the reality is like, bro, I've been here first time in 2012, and then I went again in 2017, and then 2018, and then 2022. And most people think when I just moved here, I suddenly just did it off a whim. But your boy was like beta testing since 2017. Because, I don't know, people call me crazy to sell everything, quit, and just start this new life. But I wanted to do this for like the longest time. Growing up in Canada, when I was like 12, 13, I wanted to do like nothing with Vietnamese culture. I didn't care because I grew up in Canada, you know? But then something about 2017 walked on this country and I was like, something was calling me. But the first thing I got was my parents were like, you're crazy, what are you doing? You shouldn't go, Vietnam is like a very dangerous place. Someone's gonna mug you, someone's gonna do bad stuff. You can't trust anybody, the food, this and that. But the more rebellious I was, the more I was like, wait, why are you telling me not to go? So that's when I decided in 2018, maybe I go for a month. I come to my country and I always had this like split identity problem of like, growing up in Canada, never felt like I really belonged. I'm not white, you know? Even though, you know, I have a, what are you talking about, you know? But because of my yellow skin, didn't really belong. You go to Vietnam, Vietnamese people don't even see you as Vietnamese. Do where do I look like I'm from? Taiwan. Taiwan. Uh, I edit so. Taiwan? What are you? Oh my god. I'm from Vietnam, but I'm from. Um, USA? USA? I'm from Canada. Oh really? Yeah. But, I'm from Vietnam. I don't know. 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 So I'm growing up, I always felt like I wasn't Vietnamese enough. Who am I? This other part of identity where it's like I didn't even know who I was or like what I was even really doing with my life. I was just like, yo, I'm gonna make money, I'm gonna do my thing, but <laughs> like what's the point of working and living in one of the most expensive cities in the world, grinding and working a job that is so miserable, and I'm like, what's the point of everything? What is next for me? And the only thing that I knew was like, what is going to happen to me? Like, what is going to next step? A lot of my life, I always felt like I was searching for something. I couldn't really like fit in anywhere. In Vancouver, working like a normal job, I'm like, I'm supposed to be doing something else. Like something was always calling me. Worked a normal job, worked corporate, worked as a dishwasher. And I was like, okay, I got me a nice little comfy corporate job have a side hustle, a side business. But I'm like, is this all it's supposed to be like? This, work here for the next 20 years of my life, buy a house, put down a mortgage. But I'm like, is that all I'm supposed to do, man? And the more 
I started to fall in love with Vietnam. The more my par parents were like, don't do it. It's dangerous. You're gonna die. Don't eat the food. Even you put away all that, there's still a part of me that was like, bro, something kept calling me back. I'm only getting older now. And for me to check this thing off my bucket list, I wanted to do this one more time. Because I think it's a rite of passage for me to explore my culture where it's like, I want to do nothing with Vietnamese culture, bro. When I was in Canada and I saw other people speaking Vietnamese, I was like, oh, what the heck? I want nothing. Like, I remember being a kid, picking up my phone and being like, oh crap, man, my mom's calling me. I got to pretend. I'm like, I'm going to not speak Vietnamese. I'm man, English, okay, I'll, I'll talk to you later. But the minute I stepped into Vietnam, 2017, that's when everything changed. That was like, I wanted to know more about my culture. I want to get better at Vietnamese and just really figure out who the hell I am. I know, you know, your giant goes wherever you go. Like, my problems in here is not going to change. Like, I need to change. I'm not going to be here forever. Maybe, maybe not. You want to watch this. But right now, I feel like, yes, so much diarrhea, lost so much weight, it's hot. Everything doesn't go the way that it goes in the West. But I knew what I was coming into. The doctors tell me, Here's some medicine. Deal with your stress. Good luck. I'm like, okay. Two months before I go and start planning for my trip in Vietnam, the stress gets more. The patch gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It was so big to the point where when I shaved my head, you could still see it. The most amazing thing is I was tired. I was, I was exhausted. I was like, did I make the right decision? Oh my God, it's too hard. But then the amazing thing happened. My hair started to grow back. And yes, it's tiring. Yes, it's exhausting. But for once in my life, I could finally say like, I did something with for me. Even though, yes, there's guilt and pressure coming out of my Vietnamese parents because they love me. Doing something for me, stop the constant worrying of like, what ifs, ands, or buts, and I actually went out and did it. And I finally felt hope happy. And that patch, that was so big, like, I don't know if y'all can even see it anymore. Like, it was here. And here, and now I just have like a gray spot. But I don't, it's a coincidence? Or did I finally stop stressing out? I finally started doing something for me? And kind of, my body's like, finally, Peter, you did it before we were gonna betray you even more. A lot of y'all are like, oh my God, Peter, you're so brave. I wish I could do what you could do. I'm like, you can do it because I'm scared shitless sometimes too, man. There's days where I'm like, oh my God, I actually did what I did, you know? And I'm like, how am I even doing this? But if I take a step back, my 19, 18, 20 year old self was like, God damn, we did it. 